these now will firm up. You can have a table of 4,000 of these molds, and you can just go down the line, pull, 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 and you can be churning out 4,000 beautiful pendants a day. If you're doing more than one pour a day, you can be really, it's a, it's a huge upscalable project, a uh, poss possibility. I don't do very many of these pieces, uh, but it really is a fantastic field to operate in. Porcelain jewelry, everybody loves to adorn their bodies. Here, you've got the positive and you've got the negative. It's the Crusaders going off to moor the Muslims. However, they are caught in a net of doily love. And this is a French uh, liberty something or other um, celebrating the end of World War II. And this is an Indian or Turkish metal engraving. So I like to throw a lot of things together and I try and sort of neutralize the ill effects of history with the way that I work. And here... As you can see, it's the negative of this piece. And I'm going to now show you how to make a positive from a negative. And that's what we should all be doing in life. Making positives from our negatives. And you get a nice steady flow. Not yet, not yet, but there it's coming. And you need it to radiate out nicely. And not too much, not too much. Whoop. There we go. I like that. And you place it carefully. That's a nice amount. It's got it's using the meniscus, the surface tension. And as you can see over here, this one here has settled down. It's kind of a bit like baking. But this one here would have been as full as that, but as the time goes by, it settles down, all the particles compact into position, and they lift all that detail up, and you get one of these. Now, I'm going to show you how this is going to look with a bit of color. So, we take the blue, Woo! that is the bomb, not the atom bomb or nuclear bomb, the good bomb. Once one has poured, you leave it for 20 minutes, depending on the dryness of your mould, and the moisture content of your slip can be longer, can be shorter. It depends how your slip has been engineered. I'm going to reach over and get over here two items that have been in the mold for 20 minutes. And the wonderful thing is, you can see it has pulled away from the edge. It is desperate to be released because the plaster pin there is probably exerting quite a lot of stress on this piece and it's wanting to come out of the mold because if it if it stays in the mold it will bind on that plaster pin and crack i was just shaking it a little and look i've popped out a beautiful belgium silver a catholic mary and jesus that's a Zimbabwean coin with Cecil John Rhodes and that's really really fun. This is John the Potter signing out. So now we have our item and we put it in the kiln. If you do not have your own kiln there are many firing services like Potlers and Cape Pottery Supplies and uh, you could also find a local potter in your area. I know in Cape Town there are over 300 local potters. So it's just about finding somebody who will fire for you. If you're wanting to go and get a kiln or already have a kiln, 
The wonderful thing about modern kilns, they're fully electric and they are fully computerized. You have 10 programs, you select the appropriate program, it's a choice. I only ever use about four programs and I am a very advanced potter. So chances are you would be using maybe two programs. You'd have your bisque program and your glaze program. And you fire up the piece, it takes 10 hours to get to maximum temperature and then it takes about 20 hours to cool depending on what kind of cooling cycle you're running sometimes it can take 42 hours to cool if you're doing a mild crystallization. This is the end of my day. It's nice to start with fluid, go through to the plastic clay, work with the hardness of the plaster and then place the piece in the kiln to go through the heat and come out as a durable object which is very very long lasting and will withstand the next 10,000 years. So now we've placed it in the kiln, we close the door, make sure the door is properly closed, we turn it on and then we start thinking about marketing. As a professional potter, you need to decide how you are going to communicate with your buyer. I focus specifically on big buyers for retail chains and people who have big galleries. Therefore, I have industrial shelving to communicate to them that this is a warehouse and that this is not a public gallery. I allow the work to be seen to present a lot of work and it's not crowded. In their gallery they are going to display one piece on one plinth with a large amount of space around it. They need to make a visual connection between your shelf and their gallery. Also I display a lot of work to communicate to them my ability to do business with them. If I only showed them one part, they would not understand the fact that I enjoy working hard and I enjoy the process of producing high quality porcelain on a daily basis, not a monthly basis or a yearly basis. I work every day. It's my passion. I find porcelain is the thing I like to do most. So instead of going to a restaurant, I would actually rather be working out the processes to generate a knitted item in porcelain. All the processes that the Sung dynasty undertook to generate they're wonderful, wonderful bowls with the Chinese landscapes. So, it very much is. Uh, it's imperative how you communicate. And you never know on the day when they walk in how you are going to be feeling. You need to eliminate the process of explanation. They must just know. Your buyer knows, okay, he takes himself very seriously, he has the beautiful shelving, he has the work on display, the work is ready, he has the boxes available, they are double wall corrugation, export boxes, and the packaging material. Everything is ready, so they select and take immediately. A seamless end process is what they are looking for. They do not have time to worry about whether you can do your side of the business. They are busy doing their side of the business. Your display needs might not be quite the same as mine. Clear, concise and accurate pricing 
is critical and your pot is not complete until it has entered the marketplace, be it in your own warehouse or in the gallery. Signing out from John the Potter's studio, his ultimate secret video, have a happy time with your porcelain. Thank you for watching the Personal Secrets DVD. I actually do have an ultimate personal secret. At the end of a long hard day, nothing beats the relaxation properties of singing in the shower. Trends will be trends. When you're in need of style, you need a new couch. Trends will be trends. When all style is lost, oh!